and Sal Kokar I'd like to bring up to the stage right now. So please head back to the stage area. Welcome, gents. Thank you all for coming. It's great to see you all here in uh, Mono Winwood today. Uh, it's nice to be inside when it's so muggy outside. So thank you all very much for taking the time. And, and Saul, thanks for joining me up here on stage. Absolutely. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Can you guys hear us okay? Yes? Louder? Yes. All right. Um, so really what we're going to talk about today is the opportunity of that Miami offers and specifically the development in Wynwood and Mono Wynwood to connect Latin America to Asia, brands to retailers, retailers to wholesalers, and how we can be an ecosystem that works year-round. So, Mike, why don't you just talk me through where you are in this vision and uh, how did it come about? Great. So thank you all very much for uh, coming here to Wynwood. Uh, as if you've not been to Wynwood before, you've discovered that Wynwood is a, a vibrant, creative community that is really becoming the new cultural heart of uh, Miami, if not all of South Florida. Um, here in Wynwood, uh, the Mana Group, led by Mr. Moish Mana, has assembled uh, 23 and a half acres of contiguous land that's been entitled in a special area plan that allows for the build out of 9.6 million square feet in offices, showroom, and uh, multi-use property. The bottom line of that is that rather than having an ATS here once uh, two or three days, once a year, there's the opportunity for wholesalers and B2B companies to have a year-round presence in Miami that gives them a connection not only to 40% of uh, the U.S. via road and rail in three or four days, but to all of Latin America through uh, uh, shipping and through uh, flights as well. So, so Miami has a long history of manufacturing over here. And everyone in the city, uh, you know, the, the entrepreneurship, the, uh, the city government, everyone wants to see those manufacturing jobs coming back. How do you feel the work that Mono Winwood is going to be doing and, and this, this hub that you want to create will facilitate that? You're right, and many of those manufacturing jobs uh, left Miami because there's been an evolution in the economy, and it's no longer the economy we had 50 or even 25 years ago. As Mr. Mana likes to say, the opportunity of Mana Winwood is to connect the physical with the digital in sales and manufacturing. So it's not just a traditional manufacturing facility, it's not just a traditional brick and mortar store, but it's a melding of both just-in-time logistics with bespoke, uh, bespoke sales in, in boutique stores and the latest in manufacturing technologies. So what's the plan? Is it a mixed use plan of showrooms offices combined with retail or where will the first focus be? Right, so given the opportunity that Mono Winwood presents and that Winwood and Miami present, uh, there are two main focuses. The first focus is provide one focus is providing a, a hub that allows for the further uh, fostering of the creative industries here in Miami. Um, I'm sure as you know, Saul, uh, Miami is ranked first by the Kaufman Index on small business creation in the past couple of years. Um, and there's a growing uh, entrepreneur and, and uh, startup in ecosystem here in Miami that Mono Winwood can provide a, a hub for developing along the uh, Second Avenue and, and existing uh, WinCode and other organizations over so, there. So it's sort of an incubator in many ways where where entrepreneurs can come, have a space, function year round, and build strategic partnerships, not just with retailers, but also with wholesalers, and to start developing product here, which doesn't exist anymore. Exactly, and that uh, creative hub will be complemented by uh, the Asia Trade Hub, which is focused on creating a home for Asian and Chinese companies in particular in the Americas by allowing for showroom, office, uh, extended stay, uh, micro units for more creative types, uh, retail so they can exhibit their wares, allowing them to take advantage of the natural benefits that Miami has with over 1,200 flights to Latin America and the largest deep water port in the southeast, allowing for those wholesale connections to be made. So as far as the manufacturers that are here today and the sourcing companies, how do you feel, you know, what's their value to be here as opposed to New York 
or in Vegas where the traditional shows are happening? Sure. So in Vegas or in New York, you have the opportunity to travel to a couple of cities in Latin America and be able to connect with them on a more regular basis. But if a manufacturer from China or from Bangladesh sets up in Miami, then instead of seeing their clients in Latin America once a year, they can see them quarterly or even more often with direct flights to 1,100 uh, cities in the region. The, so I've been a big proponent of creating the ecosystem around the creative entrepreneur. That once you have the system, once you are supporting the designer, you essentially create the industries around that designer. The, the, the sample making facilities, uh, the fabric textile mills, and ultimately the production and sourcing around that. So today, where are we? Is there, is there a discussion of a free trade zone? Is that something that's in the near future? So as, as we saw earlier, the uh, uh, free trade zone 281 is already established in the area and provides plenty of opportunities with that. There are other um, community development districts that are being pursued that would allow for uh, a, a flourishing of the creative class without the uh, overburden of government regulation. So other than the, the, the brands and manufacturers that want to come on and set up shop here, uh, how does this service the entrepreneurs in the South Florida community to work with those uh, international companies and give them the business that they don't have to go to Vegas or New York for? So that's a great question because through Mr. Mana's vision, this is not just simply for entrepreneurs and, and wholesalers, but also for the creative class more broadly. So it provides opportunity for education facilities, for design facilities, for the opportunity for entrepreneurs to really take their um, uh, create creative uh, industries and provide them with a, a critical mass in one location. Because if you look at the creative and the tech companies that are coming to South Florida, uh, they are oftentimes opening their offices down on Brickell, but when they have the office opening party, they have them here in Wynwood, and it shows that they want to be in this area. So now they can be here, they can be with the uh, uh, graphic design communities, they can be with the uh, creative retail community here that allows for a, a critical mass uh, that allows for creative connections to be made on a daily basis. In proximity to Latin America, that's not a small thing. It's something you know that's it, thrown out in general. But practically speaking, if there are major manufacturing countries between Brazil, between Mexico, between Chile, between Peru, how do we attract them to Miami and get them to understand that this becomes the hub? For connecting to Asia as opposed to going to again New York or Vegas. So it's it's funny you ask that because if anything, um, Miami is already part of Latin America, and Miami is is Latin America's gateway to the world. Um, for example, the uh, network access point of the Americas downtown is the only tier forces facility in the southeast, and is the facility through which. 90% of all internet data goes to Latin America. Um, likewise, uh, Miami is the biggest airport hub in the area. So if you're going to Latin America, whether physically or digitally, you're going through Miami. And the opportunity is for Asian producers and manufacturers who want to tap into those growing consumer and middle classes in Latin America. Miami is a natural platform that, unlike Las Vegas or New York, allows you to get to uh, Tegucigalpa directly, allows you to get to Medellin directly, allows you to get to Cordoba, these growing centers of uh, consumer classes. And ultimately, I'll, I'll, you know, my, my, to wrap this up, is there a, how does the average Florida citizen benefit from this? Uh, and, and you can give me a big picture point of view, but mainly, does the shopping experience get better? Is there a direct to retail strategy? Is there something other than uh, the same generic mall that we see in every county uh, that will be differentiated here in Wynwood. So this would uh, this would not be a mall because it would be a creative hub that allows for not just consumption but creation and allows for education and allows for engagement. And so while there will be uh, bespoke retailers providing unique opportunities um, on, amongst the the Mana campus, there will be much more of a 
a consumption of knowledge, if you will, a consumption of experience, where you can go and you can learn about the latest in coding. You can learn a new skill in design. You can connect with somebody who's creating a, a, a unique raw material or a unique product that allows you to, to do something new. And that's the ultimate goal. And, and fortunately, the academic institutions already are here that are building the workforce uh, with those te technical skills. It's up to us to build the verticals for those students to have jobs in, and there shouldn't be a brain drain, they should be staying here and building their careers here. Yes, and Miami-Dade County's done a great job with their One Community, One Goal program to allow us to create the, the workforce for the 21st century here in Miami-Dade. Additionally, we've worked very closely with a lot of the institutions uh, of higher education in the South Florida area. Florida International University, for example, has also been very forward-looking on this in that they have established a uh, an educational relationship with the University of Tianjin, uh, Tianjin, and I apologize for my pronunciation, where they have 2,000 students a year who are learning about hospitality and Spanish language so as to be able to connect uh, the group of tourists uh, that are coming out of China. So China, as you may know, had 130 million tourists last year go abroad, uh, many for the first time, some for the second time. And so right now about 1% of those come to Latin America. But with connections with what FIU is doing, there's an opportunity for Miami, there's an opportunity for Latin America for a half a million to more new tourists to come through the area and take advantage of all South Florida has to offer. So I think uh, if there are any questions, we'll be happy to take a few questions. Otherwise, we can we can wrap it up. Uh, let's start with, uh, ma'am, your question? All the way in the back. Sorry. I'm an entrepreneur, fashion designer. I own a boutique on Ocean Drive in Fort Lauderdale. I also have a utility patent and so on and so forth. The biggest challenge has been not being able to get our resources here domestically. I mean, I've been to Text World. I've been to Magic many times over. I gave it a second try. I gave it a third try, fourth, fifth. It's not what we need. And this show already, just going through one seminar, has been more informative than all of them. I also go to DG Expo. So we should be the gateway to South America's fashion industry. I would much rather do business with South America than go the other way. Because it's more practical for us. Because you're talking to designers here that are small quantity, that have the ability with the proper resources to become big quantity if we had the resources. I lost my major fabric manufacturer due to outsourcing. They were in business for 119 years. I have nobody. I'm going to South America. Wait, yes. thank you very much. So, so just to, just to comp compliment that. There's a lot of opportunity, and, and uh, let me say there's been a lot of evolution in manufacturing chains, and you've pointed that out. And there is a lot of opportunity here in Miami for much of the nearshoring that's been going on in the Caribbean basin and elsewhere in, in Central America and the rest of the Americas. And, and so as that evolves, uh, there is an effort to provide more value-added opportunities here as opposed to kind of traditional manufacturing. We need to know where to find them. But I have one more question. I was here when the merchandise opened in the eight, in the 70s. It was booming. We need another merchandise mark here where retailers can go and buy wholesale. Would this be a part of that as well? Other than learning and designers, we need to be able to purchase merchandise without going to Atlanta, the America's mark. It should be the hub for South America to sell their merchandise here too. So you're 100% correct. And as part of Mr. Mana's vision for the Mana Wynwood and the Asia Trade Hub, there is a opportunity for wholesale showrooms to be able to connect with uh, manufacturers to provide the, re uh, uh, the merchandise that you need to be able to produce the goods that, that you produce. Thank you. Can we get a question right up here? Hey, Carl. Hey, Shane. How you doing, guys? Um, so basically, you're saying that the textile industry in China is setting up a 
a, a hub here? Is it gonna be a main building, like a high-rise building? Or what is it gonna be, a school? What is, what is happening? So that's a good question. And under the, um, under the special area plan, that Ms. Romano is working on with uh, Miami-Dade County, we can build out up to 9.6 million square feet of mixed use, office, showroom, uh, retail, and specialty use. What does that mean? That means that under the zoning for the single unit provided by Miami-Dade County, there can be up to 24 stories facing onto I-95. Now, you look at the rest of Wynwood, and you think, well, 24 stories, that's pretty disruptive. But Mr. Mana's vision, and what we've been working towards, is to provide a step-down integration of that so that we don't disrupt the existing ecosystem in Wynwood while providing the opportunity for growth in the future. Well, the area around, who owns this area? For instance, the, the neighborhoods, it's not all that pretty, as you can see. So. Who owns those? Does the city own that? And then you guys come in and you know deal with the city, or can we as individuals buy those properties in the area? So I'm not a I'm not a realtor, so I wouldn't ask me. But I would say that uh, the land that I'm talking about in particular, uh, Mr. Mana has assembled, um, and there are different owners of different parcels of land around here. Now, is this going to be the main building, or is this this is just the so this is part of Mr. Mana's holdings and would be a focal point of Mana Winwood, yeah. Then you're going to build up from here. Yeah, Got yeah it. 295. Right. Thank so, you. So essentially what we're talking about is that the opportunity exists for global strategic partners in the apparel industry to set up their U.S. corporate offices in Miami as opposed to other American cities. Got it. Primarily because not only do you have this as a satellite to other North American countries? It is the most important satellite to South American countries. Got it. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much, guys. Oh, actually, all right, we'll go ahead and take your last question. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm pretty sure you know about the developments taking place in Little Haiti, like just a little bit up north. And I wanted to know how do uh, how do you position yourself uh, when it comes to comp how do you position yourself compared to Little Haiti and the projects that they have uh, going on over there? Because all the uh, points that you mentioned are also the points that the developers there are mentioning. Thank you. No, and you, and you raise a good point, and there, there are a lot of opportunities there. Part of what makes Mana Woodwood unique is the Winwood neighborhood that it's in. And not to, not to say anything uh, uh, about Little Haiti, which is a great neighborhood, and, and I, I, I like the, uh, the shrimp and coconuts over rice that, that I get whenever I'm up there, but Winwood has been identified by the New York Times as the, uh, one of the most dynamic and creative neighborhoods in the country. And when you're talking, uh, so here in South Florida, um, Little Haiti is known as a creative neighborhood. Wynwood is known as a creative neighborhood. But when you're talking on a, a global level and you're talking to uh, Asian retailers, Asian um, uh, uh, Chinese retailers, Chinese manufacturers, the opportunity of a, uh, a neighborhood like Wynwood that has a marquee brand like that that's been identified by Forbes, by New York Times, makes the conversation much easier to have, which allows uh, Mono Wynwood to move much faster than other projects. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. No, thank you, man. Thank you, Sal and Michael.